When I went to purchase my mule, I looked online for different videos for information because I like to research something before I purchase it for a while. And I couldn't find a lot of video or information on these machines. So I just went ahead and purchased it because my grandpa had one and I've used it for a long time. Our family has owned Kawasaki's for about 21 years now. Uh, my grandpa owned a 2002, this is a 2012, and this is a 2023. So I figured we'll do a video going over the machines, going over all the features, the specs, what's what you can see on the inside, how to do uh, the bed, from the long bed to the short bed with the two seater. And then some information here about the single seat one as well, because they really haven't changed much. If you're gonna see here, I'll do a lot of B-roll showing you guys the machines, but the 2012 and the 2023 are almost identical, which is pretty cool because it obviously means they were doing something right because this machine has been absolutely awesome and was really persuaded me to get this one. So before we get too much farther, I do not work with Kawasaki. I'm not affiliated with them. I'm just a fan of their products. So uh, let's go over the machine itself, go over all the details and just kind of show you where everything is. Uh, uh, so the big difference between these two machines is the front end here. This one has uh, a bumper behind this plastic, sh plastic shroud, and this one just has an exterior bumper right here. On the back, that one has a one inch receiver. This one has a two inch receiver, which uh, with this cord, I'm trying to use a microphone so it's a little bit easier, but it's, it's gonna try to trip my camera person up. Uh, but this one does have a two inch receiver, which I personally like a little bit better because uh, you have a lot more inserts and things that I already personally have for my truck that can fit into this one. So one of the other things obviously that you're gonna notice is the size of the bed is different. I'm gonna put all the stats and information in B-roll so you guys can pause and look at that if you'd like, uh, cause I'm not gonna go over each stat and the dimensions of everything cause this video would be really long, but but I just wanted to give you guys some information. But this bed is a little bit shorter and smaller than that bed in this configuration. But what's really cool about this vehicle opposed to that one is I can fold these seats forward. I can move this headache rack and move it forward and I can make this bed, it's about four inches longer than that bed in its longest configuration, which we'll be going over here in a little bit. I'll put a timestamp here if you're just looking for that part of the video on how to actually fold this. It's very simple. You can do it with two people, it makes it easier, but you can also just do it by yourself. So now let's go over the inside features and all the buttons and everything and where they're located. So one thing you're going to notice between these two machines is there's not a lot of difference. They're almost identical. There's a very few things, which I'll show you some B-roll back and forth here. Uh, but from the top here, you got two different cup holders. You have a his and a hers. You got a larger cup holder slot here. So you like uh, your thermal type uh, cups, like your Yetis or your Stanleys, or if you want something smaller, you can do it there. So you don't have to have them rattling around. Me personally, I usually just throw my gloves up there just because it's easier to have access to, but you do have one for either side. Then right here in the middle, you have a very large compartment. You pull this tab out it pops and then you lift this up and then uh, <laughs> I have my lunch from the other day and then an extra shirt but plan on putting different things in there uh, like blankets and, and other stuff probably some chains maybe if I don't throw them in the back but uh, it is also sealed so it's waterproof but you have a large storage right here the only downside is if you decide to do a windshield like you see on my grandpa's uh, he doesn't have access to it because the windshield goes all the way down so you can't lift this up so me personally I don't know if I'm going to do a windshield yet I do like having all the storage so then right here you have a light button uh, one of the nicest things about this machine, you're gonna tell it's very simple and that is what I wanted. I wanted simplicity. Then you have here uh, a large glove box. I have my hearing protection for cutting wood, eye protection, and then a uh, lighter match. But, uh, but it does go down quite a ways. Sometimes I'll put my handguns and stuff in there depending what you want. And then right here is your oil, then your coolant, your park brake, and your, uh, this is like your engine light. If that goes off, it just means something's going on with the engine and you're supposed to get it checked out. This does have power steering and this is one of the bigger differences between these. This has a, a little bit nicer, maybe more of like a car steering wheel opposed to uh, what the other one has like an old style tractor steering wheel. Then you've got your shifter. So you have neutral, you have high, low and reverse. So right here is your four wheel drive and to actuate it, you're just going to pull in this lever here and then you're gonna pull down or up. So you're gonna notice the trend, it's very simple uh, and I like it that way. Then right over here with the same style of lever is gonna be your differential locker. So you can use those in conjunction with each other. Then over here is your ignition. You're just gonna turn it on and that's gonna start your fuel pump. And then you can start your machine. This is a very quiet machine, mainly because the engine's a little bit farther back. Um, and then you have your hours gauge and your fuel meter, which I like this one because uh, grandpa's machine does not have a fuel meter. So you just kind of got to guess which kind of stinks, uh, but you do have a fuel meter in this one. And then here is your 12 volt for a uh, plug-in. You can plug your phone in. They say that it works enough to charge them, but realistically it works enough for it to not die. It's not gonna actually charge your phone. It's just gonna prevent it from dying. Then right here is a nether glove box, identical to the other one, just again, for your passenger to have access or you can throw more stuff in there. These machines do not have a park. So if you put it in neutral and you just let it sit, it could roll away. So you're just gonna use your park brake, which is right here. Very simple to use, um, but lift it up, put it down 
and you're gonna wanna use that every time you stop the machine, especially if you're out here in the woods and it's not level. So coming back here, you have your back seat and this is one of the coolest things I like about these. These are not a ton more expensive than the regular size one because I was originally gonna buy one just like grandpa's, but I found this one. It was only $1,500 more for the back seat and it has a longer bed. So we went with this one. So you have roll bars all through here and then you have an all crap bar here for the kids or whoever's back here to grab onto, which is pretty cool. There's a good amount of room so let me sit in here. I'm 5'11 and I have plenty of leg space. If you do run your legs into this, it's this cushion. So it's like the seat. So it's not like it's a hard plastic where you're going to hit your knees. So if you do happen to hit your knees or you're going down a hill, uh, you're going to run your knees into that. The seats, uh, I mean, they're obviously not like the most comfortable thing in the world. Like you're going to want to sit in this thing for six hours on a road trip. But when you're driving around, it is cushioned on the back and the front. So I would say for a wood travel, it is very comfortable. There's a handle up front there on the corner for your passenger. You have seat belts for four different people. Uh, um, you're obviously probably gonna put more people on here, but for seatbelt wise, you do have four of them. A lot of the times the kids will just let this go and it'll flap and then it will get twisted and it won't actually stay in, so it'll dangle down. So just as long as you follow it in, it locks up and it keeps everything out of the way. Now going along with seatbelts, if you do not have the front driver's seat seatbelt plugged in, this will only go six miles per hour. And I'm really glad they mentioned that to me because I probably wasn't gonna wear the seatbelt to be honest. And I would've been really frustrated if I was gonna be trying to do stuff here at the property and I was only going six miles per hour. So whether you put that on or you just put it on behind you, just make sure uh, you do clip that in and it will unlock the ability to drive then 25 miles per hour, which is the max speed of these. It's actually kind of a benefit in my mind because I have young children. Eventually they're gonna drive on these machines and they're gonna take them around the woods. And personally, I kind of want them to do six miles per hour. So if I don't want them to, I just don't uh, plug that seatbelt in and then I can make them go a lot slower and know that they're not gonna be Bajan, which honestly with this machine, 25 miles per hour isn't that fast. And that's kind of the goal with this. I didn't want a Razor or something really quick or a T-Rex that's gonna fly all over the place. Um, eventually, I will probably eventually get one of those because it is a cool thing. But for what we were doing here and with the kids, this is the perfect machine for us. So now let's go over how to switch this from the four seater to the small bed to the two seater with a uh, longer bed. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna have these levers right here on the sides that are keeping your seat down on the bed. So you're just gonna lift up and you're gonna have two of these. So we're gonna go to the other side. Then you have the exact same lever on this side. So you're gonna lift this up here and then you are gonna pull this tab right here. This is gonna drop your back seat. So when you're doing this, you're gonna wanna move these seat belts out of the way and that's gonna lock into place. So then you can flip this up it's just gonna be tension, lift that up here and move it up. Now this is also how you're gonna use your dump bed feature. So if you wanna dump this, you're just gonna put it in this configuration and then you're gonna grab right here and then you can lift your bed and dump whatever's in the back. Now this is an auto or a manual, not an automatic, so you're just gonna have to do it by yourself. It is a little heavier because of the fact of the design and the weight it is. If you move this uh, headache rack up forward, it's gonna be even heavier. So. Is it a little difficult too, especially when you have a lot of stuff in there? Yes, but it is still very doable. Uh, it's just gonna be a little bit more difficult than something like that where you don't have everything connected a little bit more where it's less weight. So your next step is gonna be putting on these sides here, which are tucked away here behind your seats. Same thing, it's gonna be tension. So you're just gonna grab it and you're gonna give it a pull. It locks right into this spot here, which is like a rubber grommet. You're gonna pull it out here and then lock it into place. And then you're gonna do the exact same thing on that side. But before we go over there, there's a little lever right in here so you're gonna pull this down and then over, and that's gonna unlock your headache rack, which we're gonna use here when we go to the other side. Same thing on this side, pull that all the way out, lock it into place, and then right here is your lever. You're going to pull down, out, and then up, and that's gonna unlock that from this one, and then we're gonna get in the bed and lift this up. So now we gotta climb up here. If you have two people, it's a lot easier because you can have one person on either side, but lift it straight up and then you're gonna bring it into these slots here. Now the hardest part of this is just getting everything lined up. So you're just gonna come down, get one lined up first, and then come to the other side, and then get that one put in. And those same levers that you went to unlock it, you're gonna do the exact same thing to lock it. So you're just gonna push down, and it's gonna put a bar here and lock it into the actual tailgate and just make it a lot more sturdy. So you're gonna do it on that side, and then the same thing on this side. It's gonna flap over, lock in, and now you have your bed locked into place. So everything's folded up here and then you have the longer bed. So you can see right inside here where your line is of just the dirt and cleanliness of where the difference and what you added. So now I have a much larger bed and I'm gonna show you guys some B-roll here, but the, the length of wood that I use for my wood burner, I'm able to perfectly fit 
two lengths of wood here, which is really nice because I'm able to take more wood on one trip opposed to before. I was afraid that I'd only be able to keep one. And then obviously you got to keep your chainsaws and stuff. But if I'm just dragging wood, I don't take my chainsaws with me. I just do the wood. And then if I'm cutting, I just put everything up here in the front and then I can keep one link of wood in the back. So I really like this mode and this size for when I'm out obviously by myself. I can take the kids if I want to, um, but then obviously if I want to take the family with me or we're going back to the campsite, just flip everything back. Back here on the tailgate, that is another change that they had. Grandpa has links, which I'll show you in a second. This one's very simple. You just pull this tab here. It pulls that around. You do the same thing this way and your tailgate comes down. Now I wanna go over a couple different things like durability, pricing, and just my thoughts on the machines themselves. I'm gonna be sharing a lot of B-roll while I'm talking here about the durability and the pricing and everything, because I think it's important to show how we actually use the machines, how much they can take, how much they can handle. Um, being a utility vehicle, especially this style where it's more of a basic machine, really built for work. Uh, I really wanted to show how much they can actually do, uh, just to give you an idea of, okay, this is what I, my plans for this machine, can it actually do it? So hopefully this video is able to help you make a better decision if this is a machine for you, or if you need to look for something else. So durability wise, like I said, my grandpa's had one since 2002 and 2012. This uh, 2012 unit that he has been using is in a lot of the B-roll because that is what we ended up using to clean uh, our property to build our house. There seems to be three different styles of people that want to buy a vehicle like this. There's those people that want to drive around town and go to like the ice cream shop or just drive around and be able to get to places and not have to drive their vehicle. Uh, there's people that just want to do light yard work, you know, work in the gardens or in the yard, move dirt around and haul things. And then there's people that just want to uh, use a lot more heavy work, maybe construction site or hauling and dragging trees. And I think we fall a little bit more into that side because we use these quite often. So for durability wise, we have had really good success with this. Grandpa's 2002. Uh, he said he wished he never sold that because he said he had really good luck with that, never had any problems. It's 2012, just recently he's had to put some money into it. Uh, there were some issues with uh, bearings, there were some issues with the shifting, so he's been trying to get all that squared away, but for the 10 years prior to that, he has had really good luck with that machine. And like you see from these videos, he's not afraid to use the thing. So uh, he definitely gets his use out of it. He is looking towards getting a new one, hasn't quite decided yet. He is 83 years old and the man outworks me. I, I, he, he amazes me every day we go out when we do work together. I love going out with him. I learned so much from him. Uh, he's a wealth of knowledge and it's fun to go out and just enjoy time with him, with the kids and everything and uh, go on mule rides. That's one of their favorite things to do with him. But it's kind of why I ended up getting mine as well because I want to take uh, the workload off of his and maybe we can use both of them and, and help him last his a little bit longer. But durability wise, they have been great for us. Like I said, obviously after you have something for 11 years, you're gonna have to eventually put some maintenance into it. And I'm hoping mine has the same success. But for us personally, durability wise, they have been very strong machines. Now for pricing. So if you're gonna go with the size of grandpa's, it's gonna be 11.5. That was the one I was originally gonna go with until I decided to go with the other one that is now uh, the four seater, which is a 12.8 price tag. Now, if you go with different features or if you go with different paint, it does go higher than that. Uh, the camel one was a little more expensive, which I really didn't care about the paint job. I technically wanted the other one, but when they went to order it, they said that uh, it could take a while for one to come in just because of uh, availability. So I ended up, uh, they were actually really nice and worked a deal with me and dropped that price down from the paint. The extra cost for the paint really didn't cost me much. So uh, I ended up getting the camera just because it was available at the store. But you're looking at 12.8, so you're looking at about a $1,300 difference for the four-seater. And for us, that was a no-brainer because with the kids, just makes sense. It's easy to switch back and forth if you want to and you have the longer bed. There are a ton of other options on their website as well. So if the mule doesn't seem like the one for you, they have um, a smaller version. They have a little less featured one. They have one for work vehicles. It's like white. Uh, they have some nicer ones that are even more expensive. So they have a wide variety on their website, which is nice because depending on your price range, you can still get something. They don't just have one thing. It's like, okay, that's 20 some thousand dollars. And you're like, okay, I can afford that. Uh, which is kind of where we were when we saw the four seaters. They all were really expensive, but this one seemed to be a lot more affordable. And I'm really happy that we went that route. So I hope this encompasses pretty much everything that you wanted to know. I tried to put uh, at least an overview, let you see all the features, kind of show some different things and my experience at least and what I've been able to use with this machine. I will do updated videos like my three month thoughts and then maybe like a year thoughts down the road just to give you guys updates on how the machine's working. Uh, but I just saw a lack of videos and I wanted to get something out there that showed kind of everything uh, that maybe a new buyer would want to know. At least for me, when I was looking for a video, I really would have liked a video kind of like this. 
this just so I could have made a better purchase decision and be like, okay, no, this is exactly what we want. Or maybe uh, been able to have at least a little more knowledge in my mind going into it. So as you can tell, I kind of like firearms. I have a vault room here that I'm in doing my filming. Uh, this is a little bit different than my normal content if you're not used to the channel. Um, if you're a normal viewer, then uh, kind of taking a little bit of a step in a different direction. I plan on doing more content like this with the wood burner, homesteady type stuff, here with the mule, cutting trees. I just see a lack of videos on that kind of stuff. So I kind of want to film things in that. I want to do things that I enjoy and I enjoy this kind of stuff. So I think it's kind of cool to step away from like reviews or, or firearms content or gear reviews and do something a little bit different. So that's what I'm doing here. So if you're a new viewer, a big way to help me is just supporting me by, by subscribing and, and commenting and interacting. I'd love to answer questions. If, if I don't know the answer, I'll find somebody that does know the answer and get that information as quick as possible to you because my goal is always to help you make a purchase, better purchase decision and spend your money in the best way possible. And that's a lot of money. So I don't want you to just throw it away and be like, man, this isn't the machine that I really, really wanted. So I'd rather you find exactly what you're looking for. Uh, there's a couple ways down in the description you can help out through discount codes from other companies to help you save some money if you uh, purchase through some companies that I trust. And then there's a link to my link tree that you can use. A couple of companies that support me in the things I do here, Howitzer, Brownells, and Hold Up Display. Howitzer is a clothing brand that donates 5% of proceeds and they did collaborate with these t-shirts. As you can see, me and my brother modeling and then Hold Up Display back here. They speak for themselves. Fantastic walls. I have some videos on this vault room if you guys are interested on my channel. And then Brownells, you can use code TA10 to save 10% off orders, $150 or more. And definitely take advantage of that because you can save a lot of money. Other than that, I appreciate you all. Thank you so much.